These days I've been trying to force myself to have a signals first mindset, not because I think that signals are necessarily going to be the best option, but as a way to counter the natural bias I have toward RxJS since I've been using it for so long. I have one example I ran into recently that I think is interesting to discuss because it falls outside of the typical areas where RxJS has obvious advantages. For example, when we are dealing with async situations that call for flattening operators, debouncing, or something like that. This scenario deals with a rather innocent looking host binding. For some context, I'm creating this little action menu component in Angular for a game I'm working on. When I want to perform some action, I open the component and the user can select an option in this radial menu. Side note, if you are interested in the game dev side of stuff here, I do have a second channel where I'm doing devlogs on that, and I have a link to that channel in the description. You can see I have some simple host bindings with signals set up here that work great. For example, I have these classes tied to the state of the isOpenSignal, which is what allows me to apply this simple opening and closing animation. But what I have removed here is the host binding I had for binding to the key down event that would allow the player to select an option on the menu by pressing up, down, left, or right. So let me show you what I was doing originally with signals and then why I ended up switching to RxJS. We could start off with a signals based approach by having this host binding that responds to key down events by setting a signal with the key from that event. I can then have this computed signal that maps that event to whatever direction on my action menu that it should correspond with. This is a slightly imperative approach, but this is still pretty nice, and maybe this is fine. But what I have in this host binding isn't typed. I might want to have the event safely typed as the actual event that it is, a keyboard event. So instead of just setting the signal directly, I could instead have my binding call a function that types the event correctly. That's not so bad, and now I have proper typing. In general, I prefer declarative code, but I'm willing to go with an imperative approach where it makes sense. In the original example, where we just had the host binding set a signal, which is an imperative action, I think the declarative trade-off there may have been worth it given the simplicity of the code. But with this typed approach, there is a bit more indirection and boilerplate. We have a thing being imperatively set defined here. Since it is being set imperatively, its declaration gives us no actual information about what it is or how its value changes over time. We have a host binding up here that calls a method down here, which is where our key press signal is actually being imperatively set. So what about the more declarative RxJS approach? For that, we would define our selection declaratively by utilizing the keyboard event directly in the declaration. That would look like this. Now there is no indirection as we can clearly see how action selected is derived in its declaration and it is all in one place. We can then also easily use output from observable to automatically create an output for this component from this action selected stream. I probably come across as somewhat of an RxJS zealot, but at least I'd like to think my preferences are generally based on pragmatism, not ideas of code purity. The RxJS approach here provides very real benefits in terms of code readability and maintainability, and is an example of why, at least for now, I think RxJS is going to continue providing strong benefits in Angular applications alongside Signals. If you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope you have a great day.